This video is brought to you by Squarespace. And here's the one that I'm looking forward to. The one where I get to actually talk about the things that have made me angry in this hobby, how it may have been avoided, how we could fix the current problem, and none of this stuff will ever be listened to by anybody in power because money. This is essentially a part two video. I already did one on all the blasters I like. You can find it right up here if you click that little I button and go to the, the it's like the first option right up there at the top, the blasters I loved from 2021 or things I loved in foam flinging in 2021. This is the things I hate. And I know this is gonna be a contentious list. These ones are always either the better performing or the ones where I have the most amount of hate, toxic vitriol spewed my direction. I will stand by and validate every single criticism I have. And you already know a lot of the blasters that are going to be on this list. I know that these are for kids. I realize that. I am fully aware of that, that this is outside of my realm, so to speak. But obviously I have a lot of experience and knowledge in this field, a lot more than most kids would. And I'm able to make educated opinions on why I don't like something or why I think something is bad overall. Many of the things on this list will just be bad because it's a bad direction we're going in that's only getting worse every single other year or it was just overall so mad that I still wanted to talk about it. For example, let's start things off with the Nerf Roblox series, a new one for 2021. Another tie-in with a video game. However, this is like the highest grossing video game of all time. It has something like 45 million individual players daily. It is a megalith of video game. I personally, can't really stand it. I, I have a whole video on Nerf Strike that I'm still going to do, but Nerf Roblox in general is kind of like that vapid waste of Nerf that I hate because they essentially just took a bunch of blasters that had nothing to do with most of the games and just pooped them out onto shelves at obnoxious prices. Holy crap, these things were way too expensive. Now, you can make arguments for things like the Shark Seeker. We don't really have a blaster like that. Oh wait, we do, it's called the Mega Bulldog. You can make an argument for the Pulse Blaster that I didn't even pick one. I, have, I don't even have one. It's a Strife without all the stuff that makes the Strife good. The Jailblake Blasters were hammer action, $20 for two of them, single shot and obnoxiously huge. They were hammer action jolts. I'm sure somebody wanted that. I certainly didn't. More micro shots. The outstanding one here, the one that really gets me going is the Nerf Bees Blaster because this was a legitimately kind of new design. We don't get a lot of lever actions at Nerf and for whatever reason, I think every review of the Bees kind of stated, yeah, this thing punches like 85 FPS for stock Nerf, which is way higher than normal Nerf. Usually it's like 65, 75. So this thing does hit hard. It's new, it's unique, but it's also horrendously expensive. It has basically no mod value, so Nobody ever did anything with it. Plus it looks like a bee thing. So most people didn't bother picking it up. And it's also based off of a game that's about like selling and trading animals. Why is there a gun? The bees is kind of like one of those things where he like gives me a glimmer of hope because Hasbro's willing to step outside of like something normalized and make something weird and interesting. But the rest of the line is the exact same Hasbro crap that we know to love. In fact, if you want to talk about the same old Hasbro crap, let's talk about Nerf Minecraft. I have all of them sitting at my feet. I still have not shot the video, but let's be frank. We already know what every single one of these blasters is going to do. More micro shots. But the Pillager crossbow costs literally more than the game itself. Barely resembles the thing from the game. I don't even know why. Where did the money go? Oh wait. Probably the licensing cost for getting one of the most popular games ever made. And it's a three shot like crossfire bow. A complete waste of money. It barely looks like a Minecraft thing. I don't, it, it could have came with stickers to just try to help you make it look more like a Minecraft thing. That would have cost Hasbro literally cents. They still didn't do that. The hammer is admittedly pretty cool, but it's still just a reshell of the, the four power moves hammer. This time with three shots and a less comfortable grip. It's not awful, it's still expensive, but I, I can, that's okay. It's, it's, it's okay, in my opinion. I, I don't want to spoil my reviews too much. The micro shots are bizarre. The ghast one still gives me nightmares. And the most fitting one, of course, is the guardian. And the dragon one looks pretty cool, but the, the, the ghast one, like that doesn't even make sense to me. 
And that's kind of the thing with the Roblox and the Nerf line. The thing that I kind of want to lump these two together is because they could have done a whole lot more. They could have made these way more soulful, if that makes sense. Like, it feels like whoever had to make these blasters like, oh my God, you want me to make a Nerf Roblox blaster? And they just slapped it together before a deadline and put it out on store shelves. I'm sorry if the creator or team or whoever is watching this and that's not your opinion or whatever that was going on, but that's the atmosphere that comes with these blasters. I mean, they just feel like soulish cash grabs that are built around soulish cash grabs. Like, uh, man, it is really disappointing and frustrating. There's still room for these lines to mature. There's still room for them to get better, but I am frightened to see what else comes from Nerf Roblox and Nerf Minecraft. The Elite 2.0, everything. I, I hate Elite 2.0. I, I despise Elite 2.0. I was happy to see that they were trying something new with the flip line. The flip eight I never picked up. It was a $20 eight shot blaster using smart ARs and it just never felt like worth getting. And if I need to pick it up and do a video on it, I probably still will for you guys. But the flip 16 was an unmitigated disaster. That thing barely worked. And it was a 40 something dollar blaster. The flip 32 is obnoxiously large, but lever action and arguably kind of cool and does work. In fact, I have no faults with the Flip 32 other than the price. And if you that's a thing for like a little kid, I don't know how an eight year old's gonna be able to hold Prime and fire that thing. Cause it, you can straight up murder the family dog with that thing. It is super heavy and big and expensive for 32 shots. And I know people are tired of me bringing this up, but you can get an Adventure Force Villainator for 20 bucks that looks like a cool Thompson submachine gun and holds 40 rounds and is only 20 bucks. So, it's hard for me to rationalize things like the Flip 32 for that enormous price tag. Do you need to have 32 shots that spin around and do cool things? I mean, I like visually interesting blasters, but also it's kind of unreliable because those smart ARs are just being pushed However, to their absolute limits. Know, Half the time they don't shoot or it shoots too many darts at once. Your next shot's a blank. Strike. It's but annoying. Worse. The flip series which is weird overall because they're still making Nerf bad. Alpha Strike and, and Elite 2.0 is almost no different than Alpha Strike. These are supposed to be Nerf's budget offerings and they fail against their competitors like Dart Zone, Zuru, and even Busby in every single conceivable way. They're not high nerf quality. They cut as many freaking corners as they possibly could. They don't look good. They don't function well. The only thing selling Elite 2.0 and Nerf Alpha Strike is the Nerf logo. I hate this Hasbro. I don't understand why these other companies can do so much more with so much less, but they can and they have been. I know prices are gonna be increasing because inflation is all over the place right now and 2022 is gonna be very insightful and maybe one of the most challenging years in Nerf history because holy crap, you are not exiting 2021 even really good and price to play ratio is absolutely broken in Nerf right now. Your stuff is too expensive and offers too little. In fact, a lot of Nerf in 2021 really felt like it just struggled every single time they did anything. And we've seen the problems from like Elite 2.0 seep into other things like Dino Squad. I mean, maybe you really like Dino Squad. I was pretty indifferent on it. I thought the Rex Rampage was interesting, but I struggled to make a video on it because it's same stuff, just with Dino aesthetics. Painted very well, it looks okay, but you have to like that aesthetic. And I think that's a dangerous aesthetic to put out, but it's cool they only did, they did like the three blasters. Apparently there's a fourth and a fifth one, like a water shooter and stuff. And then they just kind of cooled off. It's not like here's 18 new blasters in Dino Squad. You better love dinosaurs. Cause I was not really feeling it. I kind of liked the Tricera blast. In fact, I still do, but that's a me thing. And I know a lot of people be like, what's the point? And I agree. And the Stega Smash is awful. So I don't really feel like the Dino Squad was a big hit either. One of the most disappointing blasters for me in 2021, after the initial hype that was Nerf Rival Curve, because these are kind of pared down Nerf Rival stuff, plastic springs all over the place, but it was a neat new design, was the Helix, because we saw the Helix and it got delayed until the summer. And I was kind of hyped for it. And 
I couldn't even finish my video on the Helix because it was bad. The problem with the Helix is that it goes against pretty much everything that the curve line does. First of all, it's huge. Second of all, it's not very comfortable. Third of all, it's a hopper. It's a Springer hopper freaking rival blaster. So half your shots, you're firing nothing. And to ensure that those shots actually do come out of your barrel, you have to point the blaster down. But the problem with that is that it's a rival curve thing. So most of the time you're gonna want to have the curve option, which means if you're pointing it down and then firing, you're hoping that a shot comes out, you have to make sure things are lined up. And if you wanna use it for like the same reason that I would wanna use it, which is tomahawking shots with the downwards curve, that means you have to point it down, prime it forward, push it forward, pick it back up, aim up in the sky, pull the trigger every single time you want to use it to hope it would feed. And I felt like the side swipe, which was half the size and cost less and had an internal magazine was a way better option in every, in every single possible way. I was really let down by the Helix and I was kind of excited for it. That was the one that I was the most excited for. And once I got my hands on the Helix, I started playing around with the Nerf rival curve side swipe more and found the side swipe to be a much better blaster and like, every single way so yeah that was uh that was something that i wasn't expecting the nerf rival curve helix is not a very good blaster in my opinion i i think you could do a heck of a lot better oh uh, busby uh almost busby entirely in general i don't know what's going on with this company i don't hate busby and i don't think that they can't turn things around completely and have a much better showing in 2022 but the weirdest part with busby was that they had that gap where the, I guess they split up from their original like Alex brands or whatever, like their original like mothership. I'm not quite certain. I don't really have somebody at Busby to talk to about that, but there was like a gap where they basically didn't release anything in the US and then they came back and they were Busby. That wasn't good at all. Busby was really bad this year. The Thundershot, even if it worked, was a $10 hammer shot alternative that no human hand could possibly grip. And basically all of them were broken. And it was so bad that they had to bring another version out, which was supposed to be the original version, but somehow the bad version got sent out first and was put into mass production. Anyway, like the internals are surprisingly different between the two blasters, but even when it worked, it's like, what does it offer? Sure, it's eight shots for this thing, the size of a strife, that human hands cannot grasp. And this is supposed to be for kids. I mean, if you want Yosemite Sam's pistols as a flippin' Nerf blaster, sure, I'd go for the Thundershot, but I don't see a whole lot there other than the fact that it's only 10 bucks, and to me, that's practically nothing. The Tetra Shot, whatever the chain-fed four-shot thing was, I wanted that to be good. And it really wasn't. The mechanism that they had designed was just pretty much doomed from the start. It basically rotates the chain every four pumps, no matter what. Now, the upside of this is if you have enough chain and your blaster functions, you can have a stupidly high capacity pump action blaster. That's not something you get a whole lot of. And that could have its uses, especially in HVZ. The fact that it mechanically indexes chains means that it could overcome most of the problems that we have with flywheelers and chains, like the motor that indexes the chains getting bogged down. If you're manually pushing that thing forward, it could have a lot of applications, but I've seen exactly zero people do anything with that, and I don't have enough chains. I'm talking about if you had like literally a hundred links, so you had 400 rounds and your blaster didn't skip shots, I could see that being worth using, but it was still inferior to a lot of other options on the market. And honestly, if you got one of those, especially with the chains where they just kind of fell apart to the point where they had to make, um, the, they sent me a chain. They're like, here's a, here's a better thunder shot. And here's a better chain for your Tetra shot. I was like, what am I, am I supposed to do another video? Like it should have been like this from the start, but I understand that problems happen. The issue with where I'm at is like, I don't know how to do another video for the 12 people that care because this design wasn't very sound from the start, in my opinion. That chain fed rotating every four pumps just blew. Yeah, there were some other Busby releases too. There were a couple of pistols. It's, it's all reshells and they're not even like attractive reshells. There was one Busby blaster that I shot most of a video on that I haven't put out yet and I still want to do it. And that is the compound bow. 
It didn't make it into my best blasters list because I don't know if it's like the best blaster of the year. Uh, maybe it is from Busby, that's for sure. But the compound bow is legitimately fun. I actually really like the Busby compound bow and I think that's worth picking up and that's the kind of stuff I want to see from Busby. Zuru. Uh, I don't think Zuru made any blasters this year. I think they just made recolors of things and that's kind of par for course for Zuru. But this was like an exceptionally bad year. At least last year they made like the Omega and the Crusher. This year, I don't think there's a single new blaster. It's not that Zuru's bad. It's just there's nothing for me to really talk about. I like Zuru. I like most of their designs a lot. I really want to see more from their Chaos, like their rival knockoff line. But they gave me nothing. Making websites, if you have no idea what you're doing, can be difficult and time-consuming, and nobody has time for that. Squarespace is a place where you can drag and drop your way to a professional-looking website without ever leaving your browser. Let's say that you have no idea what you're even looking to start. You have no idea other than you just wanted to make a website. You can simply use Squarespace's template starter to pick what you want the website to do and what kind of genre you're looking for the website to represent, and it gives you the best possible starting point. Let's say we're doing it for your Nerf or Beyblade YouTube channel or something, and you're a YouTuber, so maybe you want to have like a nicer website for cataloging your stuff or updating a blog or share some behind the scenes insight. You may even want to have a paid for members only section where people can sign up and get, uh, well, whatever you really want. But let's say I wanted to go even deeper. Maybe I'm selling custom made blasters or 3D printed designs on Etsy already, but wanted things to just look better. Squarespace's tools let you integrate all your Etsy listings, add in a blog, buy a domain for a website, have member-only access to your files, set up email campaigns, and all without ever needing to know more than selecting what pictures you want and writing in boxes. You can even preview how it looks on mobile devices and Squarespace automatically formats your content for both large and small screens. Head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash walkom7 and save 10% off your first purchase of either a website or a domain. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. But here's the one that really I have a chip on my shoulder about. One that I am infuriated by, and I'm more infuriated by the comments I got about this thing, because... I, I watched my video back and I felt like I still hit the points, but obviously I wasn't quite in a good mindset because this thing broke me. This, this blaster literally broke me. And that is the Nerf Limited Mandalorian Ambin Phase Pulse Rifle Star Wars piece of crap. This thing is irredeemable, and yet I've gotten hundreds of comments about how I was overreacting, and almost every single comment was by someone who's like literally not, they must be blind, they've never looked at the actual prop and the Nerf Blaster side by side, or you're just a massive freaking fanboy. This thing is awful as a prop, it's awful as a Nerf Blaster, it's an awful value, this thing offers you nothing but heartache. And even if you like the design, you could just buy the $50 one. That's a way better value. And that was the entire crux of why this thing was so bad to the point that it was an insult. I had people even tell me, it's a good thing they made a non-limited version, Walcom. Now I can get one for cheap and you can get stuffed by the $120 one. <laughs> I don't care. If I'm going to buy a limited thing, it, the, you realize the people who bought into the limited design are the reason why the non-limited version even existed. And the fact that they did that to us, they was like, holy crap, we're selling a lot of these things. Why would we not just make a cheaper version and sell it on store shelves for less than half the price? Oh, Hasbro. Yeah, at that point, it's cool. It's a prop. It's not I'm even remotely close to the actual Mandalorian rifle, but it's a prop that shoots a dirt. Guess what? If you want to cosplay with this thing, most of the time at any like convention, they aren't going to let you fire a foam dart out of it, ever. Then they're going to make sure it doesn't do that. And if you're going to buy it for cosplay, it looks nothing like the one from the actual show. 
You would have to paint it. You would have to modify it because the stock is way too short for the actual prop. Did you want the light, the single LED, and the sounds? Well, guess what? You won't be able to see the light and you definitely won't be able to hear the sounds in an actual cosplay environment. And seriously, like every comment I got was like, well, Calm, of course it only shoots one dart. It's a, it's a creature to the show, which was never my problem to begin with. I actually like breech loaders. I was excited for one thing about this blaster and that was the breech loading. And that was mediocre at best and the rest of the blaster was horrible. I will be buying the cheaper $50 version and hopefully modifying it to have a pretty good single shot action because I like that aesthetic. But everything else about this blaster, especially this 120 limited edition that I pre-ordered over a year ago is garbage. It is irredeemable. Nobody is saying that this thing is good except for some weirdos in a couple of comment sections that probably love everything with a Star Wars logo on it. You have to be objective. I am not a fan of the Mandalorian, so to speak. It's not that I don't like it, it's that I'm not a fan. I'm a pretty passing interest in Star Wars as a whole. But even people who are fans of the series didn't like this blaster. And that is way more telling than somebody like me who doesn't really have an opinion on the show and still hated the product. It was a scam. It is bar none one of the worst blasters I have ever bought. And the crux of everything in my opinion is the fact that it had dry brushing that was literally silver sharpie. Do you have a Mandalorian blaster, the limited one? Oh man, this makes me angry. So we just take some isopropyl alcohol here, put that on a paper towel. Take our Mandalorian blaster here. And we're just gonna tack this edge with it. And it's not gonna come all off immediately because of the rough texture of the plastic. We gotta kinda rub it around a little bit. But if we were to stick to this, you can see it comes right off. And paint doesn't do that, of course. Here's the Star Wars logo. Yeah, see? Just fine. In fact, I rubbed off more of the stuff right there. You get it. So, no more. Just take our silver Sharpie here. And just go, oh, look at that. It's, it's the same garbage. Look at that. It's literally the same thing. They literally doodled all over the blaster with silver Sharpie. Like, are you freaking joking me, Hasbro? That's, that's, that's dry brushing, according to Hasbro. You're, you're gonna say I did that myself. I totally didn't. That's, that's literally what they did. It's freaking disgusting. 120 freaking dollars. Cheap, hollow, empty, like, I, God, I don't even know where to stop. I hate the fact that this thing exists. I think the alien pulse rifle will be much better and it's about the same price, but the freaking Mandalorian rifle is awful. And that's why I'm worried about things like the Halo Needler because it's gonna be basically the same thing. Like, oh, well, it's gonna be a prop that's, it's gonna be a terrible blaster, but it's a prop, so who cares, Walcom? But I already know the lights and sounds are gonna suck and I already know what a swarm fire is. And unless you absolutely have to have a Nerf Needler, which is 1% of the 1% of the 1% of the people who would buy a Nerf Blaster, if Microsoft and 343 Industries don't murder Halo Infinite before the time this blaster comes out sometime next year, which by the way, they've basically announced three new limited blasters and I'm sure they're gonna announce more for 2022. They're really gearing up for these nerf limited things. The code that's included will probably pay for your blaster. Unless they put it on store shelves for 60 bucks with less paint on it and no lights and sounds, which they may do. That's always on the table now with every single Nerf Limited. It's That's just something you deal with. But Nerf Limited right now, I even forgot that the Travis Scott, a lot of people are like, oh, what about the AR Goosebumps? That's a Nerf Limited. I forgot that was a thing. 
because it's literally just a recolor of an existing blaster and guess what that one also sucked that one didn't look anything like what they had that was also a 2021 blaster wasn't it god nerf limited has so much potential and nerf is squandering it left right front center wholesale i really hope that 2022 isn't worse i mean there was a lot of blasters released but it seems like nerf themselves are gonna skate by with maybe two or three good releases and everything else is going to be a tie-in soulish cash grab, and I hate it. I'm going to give you some freebies, Hasbro. If you want to make Nerf Limited and you want to be, like, true to your Nerf brand, you don't have to make a tie-in. You can go back to a whole bunch of other stuff. Like, remember the original, like, Stampede with, like, the drum and everything like that? Like, you've done the Stampede reshell recently. Why not make one that actually came in the box with the drum that, even though the drum doesn't really work that well, People would still buy it. Your fans would still buy it because we wanted that stampede, the yellow stampede with the drum, with the 50 round Nerf drum. What about the Vulcan that shot Mega? Like that was a thing when you had like the oversized Nerf Vulcan when it originally came out that basically was like Mega caliber. That would be super cool. Make the Nerf Halo MA40, but actually put an ammo counter and select fire on it or something, whatever. It's like still be super cool. Go to the Nerf video games that you put your licensing on, like the old N-Strike Wii, and look at a couple of those designs. Maybe make a couple of those into actual Nerf blasters. Go back in time. Go look at your old stuff and bring it into the modern times and make those blasters better. There's so much you can be doing that doesn't involve, hey, you have a thing that makes money? We have a thing that's make money. If we put it together, we will make double money and have all of the money and win capitalism. I swear, if Nerf's future is like kind of like Lego, where it's almost nothing, but hey, do you like a thing? Here's a thing of that. Oh, do you like this thing? Here's a thing on that. I'm just gonna flip out because they're so, do you really think I care about Minecraft? If you don't care about the thing, chances are you won't buy the tie-in thing. It's a gamble. You're hoping that, well, I like thing and there's a nerf thing of it, so maybe I'll like nerf. That's not always how it works. It could work the opposite way because it's like, I like nerf, but don't like thing. So I'm probably not going to pick up thing. But who am I saying? You're probably making more money than ever. I'm just ranting at this point. That's pretty much what this video was. Thank you very much for watching this video. Chances are, if you got to the end, you like what I do here. So please hit like, hit subscribe, ring the bell, leave a comment, do all the algorithmic garbage to help the channel grow so you can help the hobby grow. I'm Walcom S7, and I hope to see you in an entirely different video. You gotta up, up, up.